This is the second lecture video for section 1.4 on Hamiltonian circuits. In this lecture, I'll walk you through the brute force method. So remember that the, the problem that we're trying to solve requires us to find what we call a Hamiltonian circuit. And that's a circuit that visits every vertex exactly once, except for the starting vertex, which is the same as the ending vertex. So in our example, we have a delivery person who's starting at the post office, which I labeled P here. They have to go to each of these four other locations and then return to the start. So we can, for example, go to A, and then we could go down to D, and then we could go over to C, up to B, and then back over to P. But that's just one of many ways that we could find a solution to this problem. So what we're trying to do is find the best method. We're trying to find the best Hamiltonian circuit that solves our problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all possible Hamiltonian circuits, then we're going to compute the total cost of those circuits. And here cost could mean monetary cost, or it could mean total distance or total time, right? So cost, the meaning of the cost can vary from problem to problem. But then we're going to choose the circuit that has the lowest total cost. So let's take this for a spin and let's try this example. So let's suppose that we want to take a road trip for spring break. We'll start at Shippensburg, and then we want to visit Harrisburg, Lancaster, and Lewisburg in some order before returning back to Shippensburg. So our first step of our brute force method is to find all of the Hamiltonian circuits that fit this criteria. So remember, we're going to start at Shippensburg, and then we're going to go to the other three locations and then back to Shippensburg. So here's how I like to indicate this with what we call a tree diagram. So we're starting at Shippensburg, and then we have three choices for where to go second. So we start at Shippensburg, we could go to Lewisburg second, or we could go to Harrisburg second, or we could go to Lancaster second. And then from those second locations, we can then go to another location. So if we went from Shippensburg to Lewisburg, our choices at that point are either to go to Harrisburg next or to go to Lancaster next. If we went from Shippensburg to Harrisburg, then our choices would be to then go to Lewisburg next or to Lancaster next. And if we first went from Shippensburg to Lancaster, our choices would be to go to Lewisburg or to Harrisburg. Let's go back to that top branch of our tree here. If we went from Shippensburg to Lewisburg to Harrisburg, then now we only have one choice, which is to go to Lancaster. If we went to Lancaster second, then we would only be able to go back to Harrisburg. We've already been everywhere else. Similarly here, we would have to go to Lancaster. Here we have to go to Lewisburg. Here we have to go to Harrisburg. And here we'd have to go to Lewisburg. And then at that point, no matter which of these branches of our tree we followed, the very last step would be to then go back to Shippensburg. At that point, we've used up all of our possible destinations, and we have to return to the start. So what I've done now is I've taken all those circuits from that previous tree diagram and written them in a table. And now what we want to do is find the total cost of each circuit. The numbers on this graph here indicate the number of miles in between each pair of cities. So for my first circuit, if the first thing I do is go from Shippensburg to Harrisburg, that's going to cost, cost quote unquote, 43 miles. And then from Harrisburg to Lancaster, this path, that's going to be 39 miles. From Lancaster to Lewisburg, that's going this way, that's going to be 100 miles. And then from Lewisburg to Shippensburg, that's returning along that path, that would be 99 miles. So now I'm going to grab a simple calculator and I'm just going to add up 43 plus 39 plus 100 plus 99, and that's going to work out to be 281. And then I do the same thing for all the other circuits. So for the second circuit, I'll erase all this stuff and start over. So if I go from Shippensburg to Harrisburg, if I do that first, again, that's going to be 43. From Harrisburg to Lewisburg, that's the, the place I go second along that path, that's going to be 62. Lewisburg to Lancaster, that's going to be 100. And then from Lancaster back to Shippensburg, that's going to be 79. So for that circuit, I add 43 plus 62 plus 100 plus 79. And again, I just type all that in the calculator and I get 284. And I just do that for all of the circuits. So here's what I end up with. So I get I have six different circuits, so I have six totals, and now what I'm looking for is the lowest possible, or the cheapest possible circuit, the lowest total cost. So I'm looking at these total numbers, and I'm trying to find which one of those is the lowest. And what I see is I actually have a tie. So I have two circuits that are tied for the lowest at 279. But is it really a tie? If I draw those, if I draw that circuit, if I draw those four edges on my graph, what I see is that it's really just the same circuit twice. One of those circuits is me traversing these four cities in this order. 
Shippensburg to Lancaster to Harrisburg to Lewisburg and then back to Shippensburg. But then the other one is taking that same trip, but just doing it backwards. Shippensburg to Lewisburg first, then to Harrisburg, then to Lancaster, then back to Shippensburg. So it's the same four distances all added together. That's why we get the same total twice. So it's the same path, just reversed. And in fact, it looked like we had six circuits at first, but really we only have three because each of those circuits, the reverse of that circuit is also on our list. So the advantages of the brute force method are that we consider all possible solutions. And so we know we have the best possible solutions because we looked at all of the solutions. There's no doubt in our minds that we have the best answer. But the disadvantage is that in order to have that confidence to know for sure that we have the best possible answer, we have to look at all of the possible solutions. And that can be very time consuming. And very often there's really not that much difference between the absolute best solution and merely a good solution that might be a lot easier to find. So in order to understand exactly how difficult this kind of brute force method can get, let's think about how do we count how many circuits we have. In our example that we just did, we had four total vertices. And remember that when we made our diagram, at the first step, we had three choices for where to go. Then we had two choices, and then we only had one choice. And the reason why we ended up with six possibilities is that it's three times two times one. And really there was only about half of that because each circuit was listed twice. If we had had five total cities, then the first step we would have had four choices and then three choices and then two and then one, and then because we have to go back to the start. And that would give us four times three times two times one, which is 24 total circuits. And again, we would get every circuit twice. So really there would only be 12 for us to look at. And that might not seem so bad at first. And what we're doing is we're computing a number that's called a factorial. So for example, five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. So we start with a number and then we subtract one, subtract one, subtract one, and multiply all those numbers together. That's a, that kind of number, which is what we're doing here, is called a factorial. But factorial numbers grow very quickly. So for example, seven factorial, seven times six times five and so on, that's a little over 5,000. So that means that if we had our road trip and we had eight possible locations instead of four, it wouldn't just double the number of circuits, right? We've doubled the number of cities, so maybe we think we'd double the number of circuits. But no, we would go from six circuits to consider. We would have to consider over 5,000 circuits to really guarantee that we had the best possible answer. So this brute force method gets pretty difficult pretty quickly. Now, there are other applications of Hamiltonian circuits. We can imagine fishing boats that are uh, sailing around uh, laying their traps in different locations. Uh, we could have a sales representative visiting several different offices during a day, a vending machine company coming to campus and collecting money from all the various machines around campus. We could think of a bus or taxi service that have to pick up people from certain locations in a town, or we could even be programming a robot to spot weld certain locations on a car frame. So lots of different places where this kind of problem comes up. So let's do one more example. Let's use the brute force method to find the lowest cost Hamiltonian circuit for this graph. And again, we've got three steps that we think about. We look at all possible Hamiltonian circuits, we compute the total cost of all these circuits, and then we choose the circuit with the lowest total cost. Now notice here that I didn't give you a specific starting point. I'll talk about that at the end. For now, let's assume that A is our starting point. So to find all possible circuits, we're starting at A. So we're gonna go from A, we've got three, possible destinations from A. We could go to B, or we could go to C, or we could go to D. If we started off going from A to B, the next place we could go would be either C or D. We don't want to ever go to a vertex that we've already been to until we get to the end when we want to return to the start. From C, we could go from to B or D. And if we went to D first, then we could go to B or C as our second step. If we've gone A to B to C, the only place we haven't been yet is D. A, B, D, we would have to go to C. ACB, we would have to go to D. ACD, we would then have to go to B. ADB takes us to C next, and ADC would take us to B next. And then in all of these circuits, we would have to return to A at the end. So the next step is to take that tree diagram and now find the cost of each circuit. So what we would do is look at our graph and look at those numbers. So our first circuit takes us from A to B first, that's this number eight. Next, we would go from B to C, that's this edge, which is nine. Then we go from C to D, that's this 12 right here. And then we would go from D back to A, that would give us seven. So our total would be eight plus nine plus 12 plus seven. That's gonna work out to be 
36. And again, I'm just using a simple calculator there. And then we keep doing the same thing. So we can find the total cost of each of these circuits. Here's how that works out. And then once we found the total cost of each of those circuits, now what we're looking for is the lowest possible total cost. We see that this happens twice and it's 32, which is this circuit and this circuit. And again, as before, that's really the same circuit twice. So one of our circuits is A, C, B, D, A. So that's going from A to C, and then going from C to B, and then going from B to D, and then going from D up to A. But if instead we looked at this solution, A, D, B, C, A, I want you to notice that that's the same four edges just backwards. A to D, D over to B, B to C, and then C back up to A. It's the exact same path, just traversed backwards. And that's why we get the same total twice. Okay, so where we're going from here is we're realizing that as our graphs get bigger, the number of Hamiltonian circuits that we're gonna have to consider, that's gonna be able to grow very large. So instead of using this brute force method to find the best solution, we're gonna start thinking about other faster methods to try to get a good solution. So we're gonna lose the guarantee that we have the absolute best possible solution, but we're gonna be able to find our solutions much more quickly.